Life Audio. Hello. Thank you for listening to your daily Bible verse, the podcast that examines one verse each day to learn more about God and His will for our lives. I'm your host, Grace Fox, and I'm inviting you to check out my new devotional book, Keeping Hope Alive. Devotions for Strength in the Storm. 90 Meditations provide minute-sized encouragements for the days your mind is on overload. It's available on my website, gracefox.com, and wherever Christian books are sold. And now, after this short word from our sponsor, we'll dive into today's Bible verse, 2 Timothy 4, 7. You may only be familiar with the Salvation Army by the bells we ring at Christmas. But did you know we also produce a network of Christian shows you can listen to on your favorite podcast store or even local Christian radio station? One of our shows, Words of Life, is a weekly 15-minute show featuring powerful interviews and testimonies. I sometimes call him my, yeah, my angel because I just feel like the Lord put him in my life in the perfect time. Engaging about, conversations about topics impacting the church today. About it. And that really gets back to this fundamental question within Christian ethics. What does it mean to be made in the image of God? And I think that's one of the most important questions we can And get. deep dives into scripture. This divine appropriation of the Holy Spirit that God now dwells in the believer. That not only Listen to Words of Life on your favorite podcast store or visit SalvationArmyRadio.org to learn about more shows produced by The Salvation Army. If you are 65 or older, you know this. Watching your hard-earned dollars fly out the window on health care costs is frustrating. Well, here's something that can really help, and it's worth taking a minute to look into. MediShare 65+. Plus. MediShare is a community of Christians who share each other's health care bills And it really is a community, too. People encourage and pray for each other. Well, MediShare 65 Plus is a low-cost option for those with Medicare Parts A and B, and it fills in the gaps where Medicare stops. It's a great way to fight inflation, too. You can lock in one low monthly price for up to 10 years. And it's easy. You can use any Medicare-approved doctor or get 24-7 telehealth access from the comfort of your home. Very worth looking into during Medicare open enrollment, which ends December 7th. If you join right now, your second month share will be free. So don't miss this chance. Call 833-SHARE-24. That's 833-SHARE-24. 833-SHARE-24. Today's Bible verse is 2 Timothy 4, 7. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Five of my friends recently passed away within nine weeks. The oldest was only 53. As I recall their lives, I see a common denominator. Every one of them loved Jesus, and it showed. I would describe them as men and women who fought the good fight, finished the race, and kept the faith. The Apostle Paul wrote these words to describe himself in his letter to Timothy prior to his martyrdom in A.D. 67. Meeting Jesus on the Damascus Road years earlier had altered his life. The encounter turned him from being a religious zealot and one who persecuted Christians to becoming a devoted follower of Christ. As he sat in prison, knowing he would die soon, he wrote words of timeless wisdom. Today's verse contains one of those nuggets So let's take it apart and see how it applies to us. The first phrase Paul used was, I have fought the good fight. The Greek word for fought is the same word from which we get agony and agonizing. Literally, it refers to soldiers fighting a battle with weapons of warfare. It also implies the intense effort that athletes and gladiators applied to their sport then. Paul knew Timothy would understand how marathon runners underwent agonizing self-discipline in order to reach their optimum fitness for the 26-mile race. Timothy would also have been aware that Greek boxing gloves were fur-lined, but the exterior was made of oxhide 
with lead and iron sewn into it. And as for wrestling, the loser's eyes were gouged out. So yes, athletes competing for the prize went to agonizing lengths to train and then to win. The form of the word used for fought told Timothy that this was not a once-and-done effort. It was a continuous, strenuous effort. Paul says he fought the good fight. He could have said a good fight, but that would have changed the meaning of what he intended. He wanted to communicate that God had set a unique course before him, and he had faithfully pursued it without being distracted. He wanted Timothy to do the same, to stay on the course God had set before him. No turning aside and no turning back. The fight was a good one, meaning truly noble and beautiful and worth the battle because the prize would last forever. The same root word used for the verb fought is used for the noun fight. It refers to the arena where these athletic competitions took place. Paul was saying that he'd moved from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light, and in doing so, moved into a spiritual arena of sorts, the place where he'd been called to do spiritual battle. He was never meant to be a spectator there. He was an active participant called to suffer for the sake of the gospel. I have finished the race, says that Paul felt he'd completed his life well. He'd been faithful, not perfect, but he'd sought to honor God and do what he called him to do. Jesus used the same terminology when he said in John 17, 4, I glorified you on the earth, having accomplished the work which you have given me to do. I have kept the faith, implies the act of keeping a watchful eye on something for the purpose of protecting or guarding it. Here, Paul was declaring that he'd kept a watchful eye on the gospel. He'd protected its message of salvation from those who sought to distort its truth. Jesus used the same word when he told his disciples to keep his commandments, that is, to guard and preserve them by obeying them. Wouldn't it be great if, at the end of our lives, others would know that we fought the good fight, finished the race, and kept the faith? We can make it so. First, don't believe anyone who says that following Jesus means a problem-free life. When we choose to follow Him, we step into an arena where there's a battle going on, and we are not called to be spectators We are called to give up our rights as Jesus did and to suffer for the sake of the gospel. We're called to fight temptation and spiritual discouragements. Our fight is noble and beautiful and it's worth the effort. But let's always remember to fight not in our own strength, but according to the amazing power of God at work within us, as Paul taught in Colossians 1.29. To this end, I strenuously contend with all the energy Christ so powerfully works in me. Second, let's remember that following Jesus is not a sprint. It's a lifelong marathon that requires perseverance. Dennis DeHaan said, The Christian life is not a race to see who comes in first, but an endurance run to see who finishes faithfully. Remaining faithful to the finish makes us true winners. So let's stay on the unique course God has given us. Let's keep moving forward, neither turning aside nor turning back. And last, let's keep the faith by guarding the gospel as a treasure, living according to its truth despite our society seeking to distort it. Let's pray. Father, thank you for the Apostle Paul's example. He fought the good fight finished the race set before him, and kept the faith. Give us the desire and the ability to do the same. Grant us the courage to persevere to the end with only one motive, to honor you with the life you've given us, so we might hear you say, Well done, good and faithful servant. In Jesus' name, amen. Your Daily Bible Verse is a production of Life Audio and Salem Media. If you liked what you heard today, 
please take a second to rate and review this podcast in your favorite podcast app so that more listeners like you can find the show. For more faith-filled, inspirational podcasts, visit us at lifeaudio.com. If you are 65 or older, you know this. Watching your hard-earned dollars fly out the window on health care costs is frustrating. Well, here's something that can really help, and it's worth taking a minute to look into. MediShare 65 Plus. MediShare is a community of Christians who share each other's health care bills, and it really is a community, too. People encourage and pray for each other. Well, MediShare 65 Plus is a low-cost option for those with Medicare Parts A and B, and it fills in the gaps where Medicare stops. It's a great way to fight inflation, too. You can lock in one low monthly price for up to 10 years. And it's easy. You can use any Medicare-approved doctor or get 24-7 telehealth access from the comfort of your home. Very worth looking into during Medicare open enrollment, which ends December 7th. If you join right now, your second month share will be free. So don't miss this chance. Call 833-SHARE-24. That's 833-SHARE-24. 833-SHARE-24.